globalization and Indian economy. Globalization, as we started in yesterday, globalization indicates the opening up of economy for the world market. It means the integrating our economy with world economies. Indian economy is a mixed economy in which public and a private sector, they collaboratively responsible for the developmental goals of our economy. The economic gap between the different nations is reduced by removing all restrictions between the nations on the movement of goods, services, capital, technology, and labor. In present scenario, all economies, all world economies are interconnected. They are dependent on each other. Producers from the outside the country, they can sell their goods and services in India. We can also produce the goods and services and sell them in other countries. So that's why the most economies are the interdependent. Economies of world are interdependent. Entrepreneurs from India, they can go to the other countries and make investment there. Similarly, the entrepreneurs from the other countries, they can come to India and make the investments. In pursuance of a new economic policy, the restrictions on import of goods have been removed and taxes on imported goods have been reduced. Investors from the abroad have been encouraged to invest in India and foreign technology has been encouraged. With the introduction of a multinational companies, MNCs, they have been looking for the suitable locations around the world, which should prove very economical and cheap for their production. There has been the very heavy foreign investment by the MNCs and there was a rapid increase in the foreign trade also. Not only in this, a large part of the foreign trade is controlled and managed by the MNCs. Ford Motors, let's me take the one of the example. Ford Motors produces the car not only for the Indian market, but also exports cars to the other developing countries of the world. That's why I mark there as the world economies are interconnected, which, which is known as the globalization. Globalization is the increased worldwide interdependence of most economies, integrated financial markets, the sourcing of the production of components throughout the world. The growing importance of a transnational firms and the linking of many services activities through the new information and communication technologies are some of its many manifestations. Now, question arises, what are the factors which enabled the global, globalization? Factors enabled the globalization. Factors responsible for the globalization in a world economies. So there has been the great and a rapid improvement in a transportation which made faster delivery of goods across the long distances. There are the containers for transport of goods which can be the loaded into the ships, railways, planes and the trucks. Containers have substantially reduced the port handling costs also. It has increased the speed with which exports can reach the markets. Cost of air transport has also come down in a present, present days with increase in demand. As for the increasing demand of airways in our country, so the total cost of availing the such services are reducing day by day. Clear? Second, there have been the developments and the improvements in the field of the 
information and a communication especially in a tertiary sector afterwards the 1990s with advancement introduced in a telecommunication services especially in a computers computers which improved as the availability of a technology in our country technology in the field of a telecommunications computer internet has been changing very fast satellite communication devices are doing the marvelous job instant information can be obtained with the help of a mobile phones telegraph fax etc with the help of the internet we can send instant electronic mails and talk worldwide through the voice mail across the world at a very reasonable cost which earlier it was not as a possible with introduction of a modern technology in the field of a transmitting the information a news magazines for london readers it can be printed in a daily in sudden in way with the help of the internet technology the designing is done on a computers magazines are sent by the air and payment is made via the internet through the e banking free trade agreements and economic unions have reduced the protection for industries and consumers can now purchase the goods and services from other countries with no import controls with globalization which has led to the more choices and lower prices for the consumers with introduction of a global globalization introduction of a global globalization there are a variety of the choices are provided to the customers by the producers producers provide as a maximum number of the incentives to their consumers to consumers in a present form of the marketing system where a different number of producers available in economy in markets which are giving as a maximum incentives to their consumers for increase their sale earlier during a british age when the britishers they monopoly over a market limited number of producers were there such producers they manufactured the goods and sold the goods at their own cost means high cost consumers they were not having the better choices they were bound to purchase the limited number of the goods through the markets but through globalization when the new number of industries introduced in a country with this as a variety of goods provided to the consumers with better choices better choices as per the necessities as per the needs and necessities consumer they can buy those goods which are more beneficial for them more beneficial and a profitable for them so globalization has led to the more choices and the lower prices for the consumers it has forced the firms to look for ways of increasing efficiency inefficient producers have gone out of the business and many firms have emerged with the foreign business to make it easier to sell in foreign markets this is a one of the reasons for the growth of the multinational corporations this process of a more and more free trade does lead to the some problems also when the competition has increasing in a economy it is also uh, it is the positive as well as the negative in sense positive in the sense competition in between of the companies which provide as a quality of a products to the consumers different number of variety of the choices are available for consumers through which they can maximize the maximizely satisfy their needs but with increase in a competition in economy this is also negatively impact over economy negatively impact over economy when the foreigners introduce their goods if they start to sell their goods at a low cost then it will be as a disasters for the domestic industries 
Because then we will not have, we will not having the any of the choices, any of choices. This is as a long run planning in between of the economies through which they ruined the industrial sector of a one economy and captured their economy under their control. Under their control. If they start to increase as a increase the prices of a goods at that state when the Indian industries, they will not produce their goods in market. Then what will be happen? Consumers, they will they would bound to purchase the goods at a higher or a poor graded, low graded. This is as the drawback of the globalization also. But in, in totality, globalization is a necessity of a modern economies because presently as all economies are interdependent. Not the any of our economy is a self-sustained or independently survive in a world market. India are known for the agriculture goods, but there is a deficiency of manufactured goods, crude oil. There is a deficiency of a crude oil and a manufactured goods, industrial made, in, industrial made goods. Such goods are imported from the US, Russia, Canada, England towards India. Crude oil imported from the Gulf countries towards India. And in such eras, India exported their agriculture goods to the world economy. That's why world economies are interdependent, not as an independent. Presently, the uh, situation of a North Korea, in which as a world trade organization restricted the trade relations with the North Korea. So their impact visualized in a form of the high kind of prices of our goods. If the supply of goods not sufficient as compared to the present demand of a population, which raise as the high kind of prices of goods. Clear? So globalization is a necessity of a modern economy. Modern economy. Globalization, it has impact over the small producers also. Globalization has posed the major challenges for a large number of uh, small producers, such producers which are lies in uh, underdeveloped and uh, developing economies. India, like as an economy, we are the small, uh, small scale scattered units set up by the industrialists. They are producing as the such goods which can't be consumed by the consumers. These goods it needs as a refinement of a, or again used for a finishing. For example, the GNA in a Fagwara, GNA in Fagwara, it has making as a good, manufactured a good, but such good, such excels, it can't directly use. Such excels are used in a vehicles. Excels, shockers used in a vehicles, automobiles, Bajaj Chetak. So vehicles, such um, materials are used as a raw material for satisfying the needs of a people. Satisfying the needs of people. This, so in relation to the globalization, when the, it introduced in economies, it has badly impact over a small scale producers. Such small scale producers, which can't compete with the such foreign goods, which are selling at a low cost. At the time of independence, during the colonial rule, Britishers exported directly as a raw cotton from India towards England. Afterwards, the manufactured cotton clothes, they sold in Indian markets at low cost. As compared to the, as compared to the weavers, industrial made goods, these were sold at a low cost. People started to utilize the such British goods, which impact over a domestic industries as the deficiency of a raw material and competition with the foreign goods stop the production of a weavers badly impact over a economy which leads to the deindustrialization deindustrialization when globalization has posed the major challenges for a large number of small producers and workers like as a tires, capacitors, batteries, dairy products, etc., are some of the examples of a small industries, small and scattered units where the small producers have been hit the hard. Many units have shut down and a large number of workers 
have become the jobless. Small scale industries in India employ the largest number of workers in all over the world as a 20 million. 20 million workers are employed in a small and scattered units which are decentralized in a urban and semi-urban areas of a country. Clear? Till there, any questions? Any questions? Next is a production across the countries. Production across the countries under influence of a globalization. Globalization, when the production occurred across the countries. Across the countries. Production was mainly organized within the economies till the mid of the 20th century. Only the raw materials, foodstuffs, and the final products crossed the boundaries of the world. India, being a British colony, exported the raw materials towards European countries. Indian goods, Indian raw material demanded in a European countries for a manufacturing of products. With growth of industrialization, growth of industrialization, those industries which were carved in a, industries carved in a world economies, industries developed in a world economies, yes, in economies, they started to export it, the goods towards India with selling at uh, Indian markets at high rates. India being a British colony exported the raw materials and afterwards uh, imported as the manufactured goods in uh, Indian markets, which ruined as a uh, domestic industries. The twofold objective of the British was to secure the largest quantity of uh, raw materials from India to feed the growing British industry and to secure the market for the British manufacturers. These were the needs of the industrial revolution that had started in England at the mid of the 17th century. The foreign investment took the form of a control and management of the enterprise financed by the foreign capital. This type of investment is known as the direct investment, FDI, foreign direct investment. When the people belong from the other countries, they invest their capital in other countries. When foreigners invest their capital in our country to increase the number of, a, increase number of a production sites or a manufacturing units, it's known as the foreign direct investment. The other type of the investment is known as the portfolio investment. Portfolio investment. Portfolio investment. Where the foreign capital participates in the enterprise run by a local entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs. The task of connecting different distant countries was performed by trade. This was the position before, position before the multinational corporations, MNCs, MNCs, multinational corporations, they appeared on the scene. MNC is a company that owns or controls the production in more than one nation. The multinational corporations is often seen as the primary agent of globalization. The corporations has evolved 
constantly during its long historical background. The MNC of the late 20th century had little in common with the international firms of a hundred years. Around the 1700th century, the type of a business organizations that is now emerging the globally integrated enterprise, they marks just as a big loop for the growth in economy. Businesses are changing in fundamental ways, structurally, operationally, and culturally. In response to the imperatives of globalization and new technology. One example is there, Toyota. Toyota is a Japanese multinational company and the world's largest automobile manufacturer. It has the manufacturing facilities in 26 countries across the boundaries of their nation, Japan. Toyota has a large market share in the United States, but a small market share in a Europe. With competition of a goods, those goods which are producing, which are manufacturing in a parts of a European countries. That Toyota, it is it also sells the vehicles in Africa and is a market leader in. Australia. It has significant market shares in several fast growing industrial units which supply the industrial materials to the markets, to the world economies, especially in a southeastern Asian countries. Toyota has factories all over the world manufacturing or assembling vehicles. Toyota has the manufacturing or assembly plants in Japan, Australia, Canada, Indonesia, United Kingdom, France, Brazil, United States, etc. It's also having there some small scattered units in Pakistan, India, Mexico, Malaysia, Thailand, and China also. So when we take as an example of the food, food industries, food industries this is as an american company food industry is situated in a california california which is the world's largest automobile industry its production is spread all over the country around the more than 30 countries of a world known for the industrial units of a food food known for its vehicles four wheelers it came to India in 1995 and spent the 1700 crores to set up a plant near the Chennai. It was done in a collaboration with the Mahindra and Mahindra. By the year of 2004, Ford Motors was selling as 27,000 cars in the Indian markets. It exported the 24,000 cars to the South Africa, Mexico, and Brazil. Ford Motors is an MNC because its production is spread over the 26 countries. The assembling unit situated in a California, which brought the materials from China, from China, Japan, United Kingdom, France, and India. These countries are supplied the, those materials which require for manufacturing of a Ford vehicle. That's why the food industry is a best example of a MNCs. MNCs, clear? So in short, we can say MNCs are generally work in a such economies where the lesser industrial growth is earlier occur, which makes the possibilities for a growth of economy. They set up their industrial units in a such economies of a world where earlier as less development occurred through the investment, through investment, they make as a more profit margin. Those economies were already as an industry are there. If you start to locate your own industry, then the, you have to face as a competition with the goods manufactured in a, the such economies. 
so for which as mncs are prefer to locate in a such countries of a world where favorable conditions means as a low economic growth supportive for the growth of a that country which allocate among the developing or under developed economies clear till there any questions yes till the time we discuss as the globalization what it what it means as a globalization how it interlinks as a world economies what are the factors which led to the process of a globalization process of globalization and what the globalization works in economy through the portfolio investment and a foreign direct investments foreign direct investment till there any questions yes tensi any questions any questions portfolio investment portfolio investment means when the uh, foreigners they are given as some money to the local producers the domestic producers domestic in the sense the country's producers to use some money for set up their industrial units where the foreign capital participates in the enterprise run by the local entrepreneurs local entrepreneurs when the foreigners they directly invest the money in country's capital country's economy by setting up the newer industrial units is known as fdi foreign direct investment as their opposite when the local producers they are set up their small and scattered units industries are already present and the money from a foreign they are investing in our industries is known as a portfolios investment portfolio investment it is known as the portfolio investment clear next is interlinking the production across the countries interlinking production across countries interlinking production across countries <clears throat> generally the mncs set up their production units where the factors of production are available at cheap rates and where the world class infrastructural facilities are available world class infrastructural facilities available or provided by the government government has to responsible to provide as a basic infrastructure for growth of economy they would like to invest in those countries whose trade policy is a favorable to them money spent on a land buildings machines and other equipments is called as a investment an investment made by the mncs is called as a foreign investment sometimes mncs set up the production units jointly with the local companies of these countries which is known as a portfolio investment so sometimes mncs set up the production units jointly with the local companies in such a situation the local companies enjoy the double benefit mnc can provide money for additional investments for buying the new machines and also they may bring the latest technology for production in their economy mncs enjoy the enormous wealth and have the tremendous power to determine the price quality delivery of goods and labor conditions for their distant producers they are so strong that they can buy the local companies and after that can expand their businesses also when we take as a examples of a lejjat paper lejjat paper in a maharashtra it was started in a form of the domestic uh, uh, women's women's which collectively as a manufactured the paper and supplied towards their adjoining areas supplied towards the adjoining areas with influence of uh, 
globalization when the capital comes from a foreign and the technology introduced in a manufacturing of a legit paper which now has becomes as a mnc multinational company amul becomes as a multinational company foods had or and oil refineries whose control has gone into the hands of a into the hands of the foreign industries they makes as a increase the use of mnc's in country as widely clear as widely through the way of the mnc's which set up as a large scale manufacturing units in a developing or under developed economies by the developed economies of a world to which the pace of a growth pace of a development is more speedily occur comparatively the developing and under developed economies this was as interlinking with the production units next foreign trade and its integration to the market foreign trade and its integration to markets today the countries of a world they have become the very close to each other due to the fast developments in the field of a transport communication information information internet makes a possibilities to interlink the world economies as closely telecommunication services innovation and use of the computers internet mobile phones etc in older days the foreign trade served as the main channel connecting the countries of the world remember the silk routes of a china silk routes of china through which as a china interconnected with the european and the southeastern asian countries they exported their material exported silk towards the southeastern asian countries african countries gulf countries and the european countries through which they interlink with the such economies and flourish the trade in their country supported supported the trade in china trade routes connected the india and the south eastern asian countries to the market in the east and west india has been a rich and prosperous country and has been called as a golden bird in our past sone ki chidiya remember golden bird in our past that is why the many trading companies got attracted towards india then what is are the basic function of foreign trade foreign trade gives the opportunity to the producers to reach buyers beyond the domestic markets and their goods in other countries of the world for the ordinary consumers foreign trade proves the very useful because best brands of a different articles are within the economy they are available within the economy due to the foreign trade goods travel from one market towards another choices of the goods rises and prices of a similar goods in the two markets tend to become as the equal so the producers are far away from one another but they closely compete against the one another its example we can take as a casio which is widely used in our country in a form of a calces calculators casio is the industry the chinese toys and the japanese digital watches casio in india which manufacture the goods in a china goods manufactured in china and the japan which are selling their goods in indian markets indian markets for the better profit margin by ex uh, by export of their goods from their countries towards india they are earning as a good profits because as per the deficiency of a manufacturing units in our country which makes possibilities for a import of a goods from a import of goods from these countries towards india india is the biggest one of the biggest markets in our world which has supported or the 
uh, supportive for the selling of uh, foreign goods foreign goods in our past india known during the british age india known as the factory of factory of goods where the raw material exported towards a foreign and the raw materials exported towards a foreign and afterwards the final goods selling in indian markets for better profit margin clear that's we will continue on tomorrow any questions